are you interested in the best casual waterproof riding boot? Stick around, stay tuned, and I'll tell you about them. So, story. I know you're gonna be so interested in this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. My first experience with motorcycle boots was I commuted to London. Fun times, right? All year round, all weathers, all climates, everything. So I wanted a good pair of waterproof riding boots that I can just wear all year round. So I bought myself some Dane Easy, whatever they were. I'm not gonna tell you the actual name of them because I spent about 230 great British pounds on them. And they, I had them for about 10 months. We went through one of the worst British winters we've had for a while. Downpours all the time, standing water on the road. It was just torrential rain all the time. Really horrific. But yeah, these, um, although these Dane Easy boots were waterproof, they weren't waterproof. There's there's quite a few times where I'd get home and it had just been too much. The boots would start leaking, my socks were soaked through and really inconvenient. So at the time I was chatting to my dad and he went, look, if you've if you can deal with the money, get yourself a pair of these. These are my Daytona Roadstar GTX boots. And quite frankly, they're amazing. Now they are fully waterproof Gore-Tex riding boots. As you can tell here, it says Gore-Tex, just in case you didn't know. They're quite frankly the best boots that I could ever hope for. They're waterproof, they're comfortable, they're warm, and I love them. And they're so like, quick to get in, in and out of, and loads of protection in them. Although, there is one issue with them. On the hottest of hot days, they're, I mean, I, I don't know whether you can see in there, they look very comfy inside, but on the hottest of hot days, they are quite warm to wear. And I'm one of these people that if my feet are warm, this is gonna sound really weird, but I'm one of these people that if my feet are warm, I'm really warm, regardless. As soon as my feet cool down, I cool down. That brings me on to the next bit. So after I bought my Daytonas, love them all, around, all year round, apart from those couple of hot weeks of summer we get, I wanted something like, if you see all these Instagram influencers on their hashtag cafe racers, they've, they're always riding in Timberlands or they're, or they're riding in Red Wings, which I love. I think they're fantastic looking boots. Quite done. They're, they're riding in like Timberlands and Red Wings and things like that, which I think look great but you come off in them and, I mean, you're not gonna have much of a foot left to go. So, at the time I didn't really have a lot of money. I was sort of looking for something under 150 pounds um, that was gonna give me a kind of decent look under my riding jeans, but had a bit of protection, a bit more than the Red Wings, will, uh, Red Wings and the uh, Timberlands will give you. So that's when I stumbled across these. These are the Sparda Pilgrim boots, I think they're called. Um, they're the only boots that I found that I quite liked the look of, which didn't look too clumpy, and they just looked like a normal pair of boots. Now, I think I paid £60 for these, which is an absolute bargain, but it's showing it. The boots are wearing quite badly, like the leather's actually coming away from the sole in a few different places. The Soles actually coming away from itself, if that makes sense. And the heels are worn quite badly as well. And I mean, they're not bad, they're quite comfortable, um, but it took a lot of bleeding ankles to get them to a point where they're comfortable. They're also not waterproof and have pretty naff protection. So like the, they've got a toe cap, but they don't have anything in the way of a heel protector or anything like that. So I may as well have just bought the Red Wings. A couple of weeks ago I was in uh, my favourite shop, Bike Stop in Stevenage. Shout out to Martin and the guys. Um, I shout out Mal because they always take the piss out of me and give me a good deal afterwards to make up for it, so it's fine. Um, but I was, I was looking in there and I was looking at some, uh, I was looking at all the different styles of classic boot they've got, and one of them immediately drew my eye, which were these. Because again, they look like a standard pair of boots, they just look like a pair of decent walking boots. Um, and you also take that away as well. 
and they look they look really uh, they're gonna look really cool on the jeans and then I got in closer don't know if you'll be able to see this but they've got a Daytona embossed logo in there and as soon as I saw that I thought yeah I mean I know how great these are if the quality of these is anything to go by I knew these were gonna be good but expensive to give you a bit of a breakdown about Daytona themselves so they're a Bavarian company that have only been around for 50, 60 years, I think it was around 1957 or something like that, that they were founded. They only make motorcycle boots, that's it. They don't do any jackets, they don't do helmets and don't, don't do gloves, they just make boots. Basically their goal is to make the best, highest quality motorcycle boots possible. And it shows. You often hear people with similar styles to this of Daytonas that have been using them for 10 to 15 years and it's it's incredible how long they last and the quality of them obviously like i said if the quality of these is then to go by i was sold on these i knew i'd have to buy one pair of riding boots and it would last me for years so let's talk about these shall we so these are the daytona ac classics they are i believe the first pair of classic boots or classic style boots that daytona have ever made and I also think they're the first pair of brown boots that Daytona have ever made. They're normally all black, or obviously they do the racing boots with like the, the red leather on the side and things like that. But they're all normally all black, so first pair of brown boots. So these also come in the black, and uh, the reason I know that is because when I bought these, I sent a photo to my dad, and he's gone, oh, I've been looking for some boots. And he ended up buying the black ones as well. And I think they look so cool. They look, they look really nice. So the main construction of them is a new buck leather. I think they just, it's sort of a, this dull finish, just looks really nice. And it just, you could write your name in them as well. My name doesn't start with an H, but you know. The, the outer of them is a hydrophobic leather. So in the tanning process, they put them through a treatment to make them hydrophobic. Now, if you don't know what hydrophobic is, you'll see car detailing channels that the they pour water on the bonnet of the car and it just, but all the water just rolls off like there's nothing. Same sort of concept. It, it's as it sounds, they're hydrophobic, which means the water moves away from the surface. So that's great for a start. But the second part of it is inside, they have a waterproof Gore-Tex membrane, which obviously Gore-Tex is breathable as well, so it makes them really comfortable to wear. But it's that second layer of waterproofing, which means these are, well, they are guaranteed waterproof. But the fact that the outer is hydrophobic as well means that the membrane's got less to deal with. I've got a waterproof membrane in my jacket, but in the really heavy rains, the membrane can only deal with so much, so eventually it will start to leak in, in the small places, whereas this having both aspects means the, your feet aren't gonna get wet. Rolling into the next bit, you've got the protection. It's got the heel protection, it's got the toe protection, but still toe cap, so it's really great. But the thing I really like about the steel toe cap by the time you get to the gear changing pad the steel the cap protector is no longer there and the reason for that is so you can actually feel the gear lever which is just like it's a simple thing but i didn't realize until i rode with boots with full toe cap protection that you can't feel your gear lever there's a bit of like flexibility in them however in the base here all right if i open these up that's the other thing I really like. They have got laces, but they've also got a zip. So if you if you set the laces to a point where they're just tight enough, but not too tight, you can get them on and off by just undoing the zip. It's really easy. But yeah, if I take this out, generic insole, you might not be able to see. But I'll cut in a clip if you can't. There is a plastic molded inlay that runs the length of the boot which you think that's not really that stiff, it's only plastic, but there's a galvanized steel insert inside that plastic molding, which means in a crash, these aren't going anywhere. Like they're not twisting, you're not breaking these or anything, but there's still that flexibility that means they're comfortable to walk in and that they're not gonna be painful. The other thing that's really good about the inside is it's got like a quite a thick lining in it, which means you don't feel any of the protection at all. Um, they just feel like you're wearing normal, comfortable boots. And it just means walking. So 
where I park at work, I park in a car park and then I've got a 10 minute walk to the office, which means wearing these to, on that walk, I'm not, I'm not in excruciating pain like I was in these for the first couple of weeks. They're only gonna get more comfortable. Daytonas in general, obviously they're top end of the market. Most, most casual boots you'll probably look to spend between maybe 150 and 250 pounds for a good set. Now my road stars are, I think I paid about 350 for these. I think RRP they're around 400, but you can get them on offer. Uh, they do various discounts as well. So when I saw these on the shelf, I thought they're gonna be expensive, which they are. They are quite pricey. So retail price, they are, I think they're around 320 pounds. So when you think of that, you think that's quite an expensive pair of boots. But when I walked into Bike Stop, as I mentioned, they were doing a bank holiday weekend deal. I actually got these for 270, which I know is still quite a bit. However, if I bought one pair of boots and they last me 10 years, or spend 200 pounds on a pair of boots that last me three or four years, and then another, th another pair of boots that last me again another three or four years, if you're going to look at them for longevity, these end up working out cheaper than buying a pair of boots every two or three years. Take these. These are, these cost me £60, but the retail price is £100. And they've lasted me, what, eight, eight months? Let's say they lasted me a year. I could have these, I, I would have to buy a pair of these every single year for four years to make up the cost of these. However, that's where the extra bit with Daytona comes into it. These are going to have to be replaced because you can't do anything with them once they're worn out. Daytona's on the other hand offer a service where they will repair and replace parts of the boot for the life of the boot. That's what I mentioned before that people who have these for 10 to 15 years on is because they buy one set of boots and then when things start to wear out, like if the heel starts to go or the sole starts to wear from excessive walking, you just send them back to Daytona and you pay a small price, probably expensive, but you pay a price and they resold them for you. If you wear your way through the gear change pad, just send them off to Daytona, pay a price and they will replace, replace that for you. So essentially you end up, if you send them off, you end up with a basically new pair of boots and you just carry on wearing them and they're as comfy as they were the day you sent them off. Which I think then makes the boots worth it. And you can do the same thing with these. You send them off, you replace the sole, you can replace the uh, gear change pad, you can replace the inner lining, You can everything is replaceable. Now, an example of this, when I did my Scotland tour, I don't know if you can see that, I was getting a lovely portion of fish and chips in Plockton or somewhere like that. I basically kicked a concrete step and I've just torn this part of the leather, which is really irritating, which now means because it's gone through they're not quite waterproof, like I get slightly damp toes occasionally, and I think it's that. So now that I have my other waterproof boots that I can wear, I'm gonna send these back to Bavaria through Bike Stop. So if you, as long as you've got an affiliated store, they send them back to Bavaria for you, and then two or three weeks later they come back. So as soon as this whole COVID situation is over, that's what I'm gonna do with these. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you've got any questions about the boots, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Same for these. I mean, if you want to know anything about those, I'll do my best to answer it, but I mean, I don't know why you would. Daytona boots. If you're an avid rider, tourer, if you commute, if you ride in less than perfect weather, get yourself a pair of these and these and you'll never look back. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.